Welcome to another episode of our training or tutorials on Leading Forex YouTube channel. My name is Kofi, your admin for this channel. This is episode number 24 of our training. Welcome on board. Today, we would like to talk about something very important that we will link two of our previous tutorials. If you go to the playlist of this tutorial, that's free forest training for beginners. I'll put the link to the whole playlist at the description of this video. In that playlist, you will find a video that talks about support and resistance. And then also you will find a video that talks about candles sticks so the candlesticks and then support and resistance we're going to look at two of these technical tools combined we're still under technical analysis so we want to look at how we can combine these two technical analysis together to trade the forest market so before you watch this video, I'll suggest that if you haven't watched the playlist, then go to the description of this video. You will find the link to the whole playlist. Start from part one or episode one and come all the way to this episode. And I'm sure you will find something very important that will help you in your Forex trading journey. So without much ado, let's look at how we can combine candlesticks with support and resistance. Now, here are some few notes that I would like you and I to take notice of. Point number one, before we begin, just a few words of caution. And what is the caution? Just like any technical indicator or tool, if candlesticks point to a reversal or continuation, that doesn't mean it will happen. Did you just hear that? That doesn't mean it will happen. So once you see that a technical indicator or tool is saying this or that doesn't mean that it will happen. Yes, this is a caution. Yes, you are seeing it. It's pointing a buy or a sell. That doesn't mean that whether hook or crook, it must happen. No. Forest trading is not like that. Point number two, this is forest market and nothing is set in stone. Yes, this is the forest market and you can not just believe everything 100%. There will be exceptions. So you need to take note of this caution here critically and carefully. It's very important for you and I. Is that okay? If we are good, then we begin for what we have today. Now, the simplest way to use candlesticks with support and resistance levels to Because support and resistance levels determine areas where buyers and sellers have set up their defenses. Looking at how candlesticks react at the support and resistance level will help you greatly in predicting where price will go next. All I'm trying to say here is the simplest way to trade candlesticks is with support and resistance. That is what the first point is saying. The simplest way that you can trade candlesticks is 
with support and resistance. So you need, it means that you need to trade candlesticks with support and resistance. The reason is because support and resistance levels determine areas where buyers and sellers have set up their defense. Looking at how candlesticks react at the support and resistance levels will help you greatly in predicting where price will go next. So that's why I said that if you haven't watched support and resistance video on this channel, then just go to the description of this video. You will see a link to the whole playlist on this channel, which is named Forest Training for Beginners. Go to that playlist and start watching. All right, let's continue. Now, let's look at some of the critical things and the important things we want to look at. Now, take for instance, this example. This example is not just a textbook example. This is real forest world example. Are we good? Yes. Now, if you look at this example, you will see a lot of supports and resistance. This is one. This is another one here. And then this is another one here. This is support. This is resistance. This is support. This is resistance. This is support. This is support here. Now, when you look at these support and resistance that have ticked, for instance, this one, this one, this one here. Yes, let's go with this three, or maybe even this one you realize that we have minor support and resistance and then major support and resistance. Now, this one here is a major support, sorry, a major resistance. This one here is a major support. Again, this is a major support, sorry, resistance, a major resistance. This is a major support. This is a minor resistance. This is a minor support. This is a minor support. This is a minor support. Is that okay? Now, if that is the case, the trade has come all the way up to a major resistance level. So major resistance, major support. We are looking at these two levels. Now, the trade has come all the way to a major support area. Sorry, resistance. Why am I mentioning support all the time? A major resistance area. Okay, a major resistance area. Now, this is a real Forex world example. So, we already know that when a trade comes to a very critical level like this, we expect either a break up or a reversal back down. These are the two things we look at when it comes to support and resistance. By this level, we are trying to trade support and resistance with candlesticks formation. So we are at a very critical moment. We are watching the chart to see whether the candles will break the uh, resistance level up or the candles will respect or the trade will respect the resistance level and make a reversal back down. So these are the two things we are looking at at this level right now, this very key resistance level, because this is where the trade is currently. The trade is somewhere here currently, and we are looking at it with this major resistance level. Are we okay? Now, let's continue, if you are okay with this. Now, look at what happens. Whilst we are watching to see what will happen, there is a first candle, okay? A first candle that comes bearish. And the first bearish candle here doesn't mean that we should start selling. The rule is that if indeed this resistance level here is being respected, then the candles that will start being bearish 
must close below the previous bullish candle. Don't forget the rule. If you haven't watched the uh, candlesticks patterns, we have the single patterns, the double patterns, and then the triple patterns. All is in the playlist that I just told you about. When you go to the description of this video, you'll find the link to the whole playlist. So when you watch these videos I'm talking about, you realize that the rule is that at this very strong resistant level, the first candle comes bearish, comes sell. But the first candle that has come sell didn't break below the last bullish candle. So you can't start selling from this angle right here. No, you have to wait until another candle breaks below the last bullish candle. Now, what happens? Lo and behold, the next candle that came actually closed below the last bullish candle. And then closing below here, it, it means that, listen to my words carefully, it needs to close below. You don't just see the down move past this last bullish and then you enter. No, you need to wait patiently for the candle to close. So at this level, the candle closes below the last bullish candle. And this gives you the confirmation to start selling from this angle here. So you put yourself immediately when you see the candle closing below the last bullish candle. So at this level, this will be your entry price for a sell. That will be your entry price, your E level. That's your entry price for a sell. Now, assuming you saw this pattern and then you took the sell, let's see what happens on the next candle, whether or on the next slide, whether we actually going to lose or make profit. Oh, ah, here we are. What do you see? A lot of profits. Is that not it? Because look at our entry. This was our entry level here. We entered the trade here. So if we enter the trade here, from this level up down here, is our profit. Now, this is happening nicely because we are looking at a very strong resistance level, a very strong support level, strong resistance level, strong support level. Now, when you look at the support level, the trade even came and then it broke down below that support level. So it broke this support level straight up. The next candle that came broke the support and it's further going down. So this is a clear example of how you can trade the candlesticks patterns with support and resistance. The very first thing is to look for major support and resistance levels. And then you wait for the patterns, which is the candlestick patterns to form. And here, this is a resistance level. We had a first bearish candle or a sell candle, but the rule is that it must close below the previous bullish candle. So this is the previous bullish candle. And this is where it started forming. So it must close below it. Now, the first candle couldn't close below it. So we still wait. The next candle comes and then that one closes below it. So once that happens, we take our entry point at this level. This becomes our entry point. And then comfortably, we sweep our profit. Are we good? So if you want to combine support and resistance with candlesticks patterns, this is one of the examples and the best ways to do that. Now, let's look at someone who would just want to take the trade just using the patterns. I mean, the candlesticks patterns alone. Let's look at that. Someone who tries to trade with only the candlesticks patterns. This is our screen. If you just want to trade with candlestick patterns, look at this example I'm showing you. The same trade. 
Now we have a hammer for me here. So see a hammer here at a very minor support level. You want to do what? Buy, isn't it? If you bought, look at how far the trade went. And then it came all the way back big against you. So you would have been stopped out. You, your stop loss would have been hit by now. Isn't it? Good. Look at evening star for me here. That is a spinning top. Look at evening star. The spinning top called evening star. It got formed here because this is a minor resistance level. Minor resistance level. We had a spinning top that is formed here. So you say, yeah, it is time for me to sell. So if you sold, look at how it came. It only went down little and then came back high against you. You would have been stopped out. You would have lost this trade too. Now, we had a drop down to another minor support level here. When the trade got to this level, we had another doji candle forming. So this doji candle here, you'll be like, wow, it's time for me to buy because a doji has formed. So you want to buy. If you bought, what would have happened? You would have still lost the trade. So it is good that you don't just trade with just candlesticks patterns because you are seeing them. You look at them at major support and resistance levels. And once you can stick to that rule, you are sure of making good profits from your trades. And you are sure of getting good trades with major support and resistance levels. And then obeying the pattern instructions. Once you can do that, you are sure of some good trades. Now, let's take some rules here, some common mistakes that we all do as traders. Okay, not you alone. We all do them as traders. Now, the very first one I want you to take note of it is that we try to find meaning in every candlestick that appear on the chart. That is what we do. We try to find meaning. We try to read meaning into every candlestick that is seen on our screen or on our, on our chart. And how do we do that? A lot of the time, markets are noisy. So listen to the instruction well. A lot of the time, the market, markets are noisy. Not every candlestick is useful when thinking about future price movement. So it is not every candlestick that is useful. Although it's showing you a doji, it's showing you a hammer, it's showing you an evening star or morning star, it's showing you whatever. But that doesn't mean that quickly you should go into the market because you are seeing them. You need to see them at very critical points or levels. And then once you see them at those critical points and levels, then you can look out for the pattern to form. It's not just the candle, the doji forming or the hammer forming or the spinning top or the evening star or morning star forming. No. You need to look for the pattern. Once the pattern forms, then you are good to go. So that is what normally we do. You should take note and know that the market is always noisy most of the times very noisy and the word noisy here means that there's a lot of movements and these movements are not stable movements then the movement is not something to listen to it's just noise so you need to wait for the noise to settle and the noise will settle at major points major resistance levels major support levels are the areas that you see the noise settling. And when the noise settle at those areas, you are good to have a good trade when you spot them. Point number three says, so first, identify where you think these support and resistance levels are, and then start looking out for candlestick patterns at those levels. Are we good? So that is the first thing you need to do. Just identify where you think 
are strong support or resistant levels. And then once you find out that level or you get those levels, then you begin to look out for candlestick patterns at those levels. And once you spot those candlestick patterns at those levels, you are sure of a good trade. Point number two, your imagination is too strong. We always have strong imagination. And what do I mean by strong imagination? If you have to zoom about 500%, normally those of us trading, we want to zoom the chart to become so bold and big for us to see well, whether indeed it is happening the way or we try to zoom and try to read meaning into the candle, whether the candle is properly formed or not. We try to adjust our thinking to, to line up to make it look like that is it. So if you have to zoom about 500% or an over or spin at the Japanese candlestick chart, because you think you see something, what I want to say is that there's probably nothing there because you don't need to struggle to see it. You don't need to force yourself to see it. When it comes, it's so easy to spot. So stop worrying yourself by trying to read meaning or having strong imagination because you, you think that is it when it is not appearing well. The picture is not so clear, but you still want to make meaning out of it. Don't do that. If things will line up the right way, it shouldn't be difficult to spot it. It should be easy. The next thing I will talk about is focus on finding evidence of strong buying pressure when you expect to buy and evidence of strong selling pressure when you expect to sell. Just like the example I showed you. There was a strong selling pressure and we saw it and then we decided to go for it. So if you look at the example I showed you, very strong selling pressure. Look at it. Look at the selling pressure. Very strong one. So no one will tell you that this is indeed a trade you should go in for. So expect a strong selling or buying pressure. And then once you see that evidence, you are good to go. Are we okay? Let's look at another point. Your imagination, should not, your imagination should not be standard. And what do I mean by that? The Japanese candlestick patterns that are supposed to form after three candles based on textbook examples may actually end up forming over five candles. Now, what we are trying to say is that, let me go back to the example we just did to explain this. What we are saying is that, yes, you think that immediately after this candle is formed, the next one should break below here. Sometimes, yes, the next candle may not even break below. Sometimes it might not even be two candles. Maybe the very first candle will come and then to break below the previous bullish candle. Sometimes too, you get about five candles forming. Five candles will actually come to break. Sometimes the fifth candle will actually break below the last bullish candle. So it is not static. It is not so standard that once this trade will go sell, the next candle must close below the previous bullish candle. No, 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 no. And it is not a standard rule that the second candle should rather close below the last bullish candle. No, it is not standard like that. Sometimes the first candle can do that. Sometimes it may take two candles to do that. Sometimes it may take three candles or four candles or five candles, even six candles or more to do that, depending on the length of the last previous bullish candle. So it is not a standard something that once the first candle breaks below, then it means all the time it is the first candle that must break below the last bullish candle. I don't know if you are getting it. It is not so standard like that. That is why we're saying that the forest market is not a 100% one-sided way thing. It keeps evolving. It keeps changing. 
it keeps giving us new instances or there's dynamics in the market. So if maybe the first time you saw the reverse eye, it was just one candle that closed below the last bullish candle, fine. Here we have another second party you are seeing, but it's taking two candles to close below the last bullish candle. There'll be another time you may see even three candles before the fourth one closes below the last bullish candle. Do you understand? So that is the meaning of what I just said over here, that the forest market, let me go back. Okay, that's here. The forest market, your imagination should not be standard making it look like once you saw one candle doing that, the rest that you will see, you need to see one candle doing that. No, 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 no. It may take one candle to do that at some times, but other times it may take two or three or four or five candles to do that. That doesn't mean that that one is wrong or that one is not a good setup. This is what you should know. Now, let's go to the next point. Just because a three candlestick pattern takes four candles to form doesn't invalidate the pattern. So like I said, maybe the first candle, uh, the first pattern you saw, it was just one candle that came below and broke below the last bullish candle. So when you see two or three candles doing the same thing, doesn't mean that that pattern is wrong or that pattern is not right. No. So the meaning is still the same. That is the last point. The meaning for one candle, two candles breaking below or three candles or four candles is still the same. It's more important to understand the price action behind the candlestick pattern than the simple memorize, memorizing it in a standard form. I think I've made myself clear with this explanation. Now let's continue because we have a few more points to end this. You know, these are all certain mistakes we traders do. You forget the bigger picture. This is another thing that we do. We forget the bigger picture. One, the bigger picture is in two folds. One of it is looking for this support and resistance at lower time frames or smaller time frames. And then we ignore the bigger time frames. Sometimes the bigger time frames gives better analysis and results, in case you care to know. So don't forget the bigger time frame. So if you, const you constantly just focus on shorter time frames like five minutes chart, without stepping back and trying to look at the bigger picture, your trades will tend to get blindsided. So try not to make your focus too narrow, always looking at smaller time frames. Don't do that. Sometimes you need to zoom into bigger time frames. The second point is that don't try to look at smaller or minor support and resistance levels. Look for major support and resistance levels. Sometimes we consider on the minor ones and we forget to look at the bigger picture, which is the major support and resistance levels. So don't always focus on smaller time frames or minor support and resistance levels. Focus on major ones too. And the major ones will give you the best results. Now the next point here is you don't have to pay, uh, have to be patient and wait for confirmation. There are some candlestick patterns that are considered self-confirming, but many are not. Make sure you wait until the candlestick closes and is fully formed before acting on a pattern. So this is what I want to mean. You have to patiently wait for confirmation. Sorry, I put don't here, but this is invalid. You have to patiently wait for confirmation. That's what I want to mean. You have to wait. Wait, especially the last point here, make sure to wait until the candlestick closes and is fully formed before acting on a pattern. So like I showed you, it took the second candle to close below the last bullish candle. So don't be in haste after it broke below, then quickly, for instance, after the trade broke below, it broke below here. Immediately you saw the price passing below this one, then quickly you jump in. No, you need to wait patiently. Sometimes it can break below here, 
whilst it hasn't closed, if you enter, you see the trade reversing back and closing above the previous bullish candle. When that happens, it means the pattern is invalid. It only came down, but it didn't close below down. It went back, it reversed back. So you have been in haste. Look at an example here. Look at this example here. This came bullish here, sorry, bearish here, but it didn't close below the last bullish candle. The second candle came, broke below the last bullish candle, but retraced back. You see that? Look at it. It came below, broke below the last bullish candle, which was somewhere here, but it didn't stay there. It went back and retraced. So this is the example I'm trying to mean here. So wait patiently for the trade to close. Once it closes and you see the pattern clear, then you can jump in. If you love what you have seen and this tutorial, please subscribe to this channel. I want to see this channel getting the 10K subscribers, the 50K, the 100K subscribers, other channels are having. I'm not sure those channels are better than this one. It will take your effort to, to bring me to that level. So subscribe, hit the notification bell, because I am not just going to be doing tutorials. Once we are done with tutorials and you are now a trader, we have so many other things we will do. We will share a lot of things that will be amazing. So don't go away. Subscribe to this channel for more because there are lots coming, okay? Now, we'll be touching on some few tools for, for when it comes to um, technical analysis. I think I've covered almost 80, 90%. We are yet to talk about some technical tools and then we'll be done with technical analysis. But those technical tools will come later. I'll be talking about uh, the other analysis. We have sentiment analysis, and then we also have fundamental analysis. We'll be talking about those analysis soon. Subscribe to this channel once again. My name is Kofi, and thank you for being with me. More videos coming your way on this channel, and I'll see you in our next video.